Good afternoon. As Ali said, we met a couple of weeks ago on a march. A march for the peace of Palestine. Won't be the first march that we've participated in, and I'm sure it won't be the last if the situation carries on as it is. But for Ali and for a lot of the participants there, they were surprised. How come the Jews oppose the Zionist occupation of the Holy Land? We had their big barriers, the big uh, barriers. Jews are against Zionism. Zionism is <coughs> against Judaism. They are two separate issues. And obviously the time there didn't permit to explain in full. It was a large gathering. But afterwards we did manage to explain a certain amount of what our opposition to Zionism is. And a bit of the history of Zionism and Judaism. <coughs> Jews are descended from Abraham, who is your forefather, your great-grandfather, from two separate sons. Jews throughout history have lived in a lot of countries. In, of more recent, in the last thousand years, since they, uh, 2,000 years ago, more, they had, uh, until then they had a temple. When the temple was dest uh, destroyed in the Holy Land, we were commanded to go into exile and to live all over, all over the world. And we did so. We have had oppressions, we've had problems, we've had good times and bad times. We had Jews in Arab countries, in Morocco, and in Iran, and in Iraq, and, uh, uh, big, big communities, Tunisia, all over, Afghanistan. And we've had Jews in Poland, and in Russia, and in Hungary, and Germany. And although there's never been a complete quiet time for the Jews, but the Jews in the Arab countries were better off than those in the European countries. <coughs> European countries, um, there were oppressions, more regular and more often. But basically, what do the Jews want? The Jews wanted just one thing, to, to live in peace with their neighbors, to be able to socialize, hello, bye-bye, friendly, keep to their religion, respect the other person, the other person respect them, they do business together, they work together. This was fine. But the Jewish people, the ideal of the Jewish people is the religion, the Torah. The Torah is the Old Testament with its teachings. And the whole idea of a Jew is to keep to the religion, to stick to the religion. You say we had various degrees of Jews. We had plain Jews and we had higher Jews. But only on who is a high authority in Judaism. We had no aspiration to be nationalists, to be politicians, or to get involved in the, lo in the local. Nobody wanted to take over. The, the Moroccan Jews didn't want to take over Morocco, or the Polish Jews didn't want to take over Poland. They just wanted to be able to live in peace and harmony. There were, as I'm sure you must have had in your religion as well, dropouts, people that leave the religion. They don't want to be tied to laws, to morals. They want a free life. And how do they do that? Usually they had to abandon their religion completely, more so in the Christian countries where they became Christians, or said they became Christians. But these people played no longer a part in Jewish life. They married they become completely English or French or whatever they were, and that was it. As far as the Jewish community was concerned, they cut off all ties. There was never a time where non-Orthodox, non-practicing Jews were important to the Jewish people. In the late 1800s, when Napoleon came on the scene, he started off a new field. This world field was equality for everybody. Emancipation. The emancipation caused equal rights 
And at the same time, people with old beliefs started, some of them, to drop it. And there was one assimilated Jew who converted towards the end of his life called Herzl. Theodor Herzl. He didn't know about Judaism. He was born Jewish. But he didn't know about Judaism. But he decided that there is a Jewish problem. And what is this Jewish problem? That we don't have a country and a land. Judaism doesn't have to be, as far as he was concerned, religious. We've got a country, and we've got an army, and we've got a land. We'll be the same as everybody else. We won't have any anti-Semitism anymore. And he founded the idea of Zionism, which is basically a political movement for the furtherance of people born, of, born to be Jews. The sympathizers that he had with that were all assimilated Jews. No religious Jew wanted to know anything about it. They all said these people are uh, nothing to do with Judaism, the same as I said in the, in, in the speech at the rally. Communism was founded by people like Marx, who was born Jewish. But it's not a Jewish concept, communism. It's not a Jewish thing. Zionism was also founded by people who were born Jewish, but it doesn't make it a Jewish thing. So, this uh, idea developed bit by bit. In the countries where the Jews were primitive or kept themselves to themselves, the assimilated Jews, these nationalistic Jews, got connections in the government, got connections and sympathy, till they started to become successful. They started becoming sensitive of Jews. If Jews in Germany had a problem, they would go to the Zionist authorities and speak to them. And however many rabbis and however many millions of Jews got up and said, it's nothing to do with us, they wouldn't listen. Because they could relate to an assimilated man. Where if somebody dressed like me, it's different. They don't feel the same. This had a very, very tragic and unfortunate um, result. The result was, as I say, that as soon as it was founded Zionism, it was condemned. Jews came out and said, this is, this is atheistic, this is idol worship, this is nothing. We mustn't have anything to do with it.